Hola woodworkers, Paul Carlson here, small workshop guy. Today's video is about building this crosscut sled. Uh, it is designed to use the match fit dovetail clamps. That's not so unique, but I think it's a good idea. But also I have these holes, three quarter inch holes, a lot of them in the sled, and I'll be explaining the science behind those that make this a very unique sled tune. If you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you do so, and I'd love it if you'd leave some comments and some likes and maybe even share this puppy with some of your woodworking friends. You'll notice a brand new Patreon link in the description. If you hurry, you can be one of my first Patreon supporters. <laughs> That's funny. There's probably no hurry at all. My goal in this sled was to have a fairly large one, but yet a very light one. So the first thing I did was measure or weigh the components so that I would know what I was starting with. So I took three quarter inch uh, birch plywood and uh, started laminating together the uh, front and back fences. And then using my saw stallions, I started cutting out some of the unneeded parts of the sled, uh, which are the corners. They're really not needed to support any work. You got the middle of the sled to do that. I started by off camera putting in two dovetail slots at an angle. And what I'm demonstrating here as these match fit clamps, you can take off a little holding piece on the top and turn the clamp around. And then you can have the hold down piece be further than your slot. Right, I have some more slots to put in there, so I'm putting on these uh, bench saddles from uh, Lee Valley Hardware. And uh, that allows me to put a temporary sacrificial fence up on top of my workbench so I can do some cutting and stuff without damaging my uh, Samurai Carpenter workbench. And this is one of my uh, track guides that I built using the Match Fit Dovetail Clamp System. And so I'm using that to do some more slots. So. Here you can see I'm already using the match fit uh, clamps in the grooves to hold down my track and then using my router to cut some more uh, dovetail um, slots. Now I'm going to put some holes in this. I'll explain at the end of the video why. And to do the holes, I used a three quarter inch wood owl auger bit. And the secret here is not to press down hard and it'll stop by itself before it tears out in the bottom. I flip the sled over and I use a three quarter inch spade bit to finish up those holes. Then a little sanding to get everything smooth on the top from all of that drilling. And flipped it over and did the other side as well. And then use a little sandpaper on the fingertip to clean out the inside of those holes. And moving the clamps around, you'll find it's very helpful to have a little hammer to tap them. Uh, they move much easier that way. I'm on the table saw doing an initial cut on the back and front fences to cut them down to two and a half inches tall in order to remove excess wood and lighten up the total load. So we'll see a 10 glue first in order to put down the uh, far fence and then uh, when that's all set turn it over do some countersink uh, holes and drill some screws in there to hold that securely the alignment of that fence is not important at all so now we're going to use the william ing five cut method unfortunately we're going to use it several times in order to get the critical fence aligned that's the one that we want to be 90 degrees to the saw blade and the table saw fence. We're going to start by anchoring one corner of the fence uh, to the sled. Need to use countersink drill bits so that the screws uh, do not protrude from the bottom. We temporarily align the back fence using a T-square and then we put in a screw. We clamped it first so it wouldn't move. Once that's in position, we cut all the way through the sled. Now it's time for the William Ng five cut method to measure how precisely the fence has been set. I write uh, on one side of the board one and five, and then I write two, three, and four on the other sides, and then I cut them in that order. When I do the fifth cut, I make it a little bit larger so that I can measure things. 
I make a note of what was the top and what was the bottom. I use the calipers and I do a precise measurement. I compare those measurements, subtract the difference, divide that by four, divide that by the length of the fifth cut, and then multiply that times uh, the distance from the one end of the fence to the other. Did you follow all that? I will put a link to the William Ng video so that you can see exactly how this is all done. I clamp a piece of wood that has a point on it to the existing fence uh, and then I use a feeler gauge to adjust the fence, in this case back toward the garage door uh, by the distance I think I need and then I secure it with a new screw and then I do another five cut method. Did the same measuring, uh, still wasn't there, so calculated how much I needed to move it again, put that uh, pointed stick there, moved my fence back by that amount, re-screwed it, and now doing my final cut. I know that a little quick, but again, watch the William Ng famous video. So here's my, uh, hopefully, final cut. So I didn't show you all the cuts, but I did the five cuts, did my measuring here. I got my fingers crossed, hoping things are gonna work out. And uh, let me take you through the math a little bit more slowly that's involved when I get to that section. All right, admiring my result. So here's, again, a summary of how it works. Um, I take that cutoff board uh, that I had marked the top and the bottom, and I put the measurement for the top down there. I put the measurement for the bottom there. I subtract the difference, and then I divide that by four, which because I did four uh, sides and get a measurement. Then I divide that by the length of this uh, piece of wood to get my, basically my air rate per inch. And I got a result of 0 0.00025. And so if I multiply that times 10 inches, that would be an error of uh, two thousandths over a 10 inch. And that's good enough for the kind of work that I do. So happy with uh, the way that is. Now I'm gonna just secure it with some uh, screws obviously countersink so that they don't scrape on your tabletop. And that completes my crosscut sled build. Before I explain uh, the science behind the 34 precisely placed holes, let me do a little ad for another video. I did a little mini sled as well as this big sled, bigger sled. It's not real big. It, purposely I designed it to be light. So this little mini sled is just for little bitty cuts and for little angular things and uh, just something that's light and I can grab off the wall and slap on the table saw with little or no effort. And uh, it can use these uh, match fit clamps in order to hold a little uh, stop lock on the fence and then it can secure pieces with the match fit. So take a look at that video. I'll put that uh, link up there wherever there is, somewhere. Just look for it, it'll be here or there. All right, now we get to this sled, which is all finished. I put a protective guard on the back, which is nothing more than three pieces of, uh, actually six pieces of three quarter inch plywood, being overly safe. And they're just glued on there. And then there's a channel cut in those for the blade. And I've marked these off to say, hey, don't put your hands there. Because I can hold my work pieces down with the match fit clamps, I don't have to put my hands in here and hold down a piece. So I can just slide this in and hold down a piece. <laughs> okay, finally, what you've been waiting for. What is the rationale of the 34 holes? They're three quarter inch holes. Uh, I have a neighbor who's a retired aerospace engineer, spent his entire career with NASA, and his team and his job, and he was the head of that team, 
was to cut down on the friction on the space capsule during re-entry so that it wouldn't overheat and uh, destroy itself. And in his scholarly research for how to do that, he ran across uh, a, an epistle by some um, Feng Shui Tai Chi masters of the 11th century. And they described in an artifact that he found a precise layout of holes that if put into a surface would result in the hyperbole of the air resistance folding over on itself and creating a dissonant uh, compaction of the air that would make the surface slide without friction and more smoothly. And so I decided to give it a try. <clears throat> now, I know you guys and girls are a skeptical bunch. So I'm going to demonstrate the effect of having these 34 holes in this pattern on this crosscut slit. I put a piece of walnut in here. I've got it held down with a match fit clamp. So there'll be no tomfoolery. You won't see me uh, move anything. And uh, I've got a stop block. So we're all ready to go. Let's do the cut and I'll show you how fast it works. All right, you want to see that again? What? You don't think it cut? Ha ha ha. <laughs> now, if you believe that, I've got a Brooklyn Bridge for sale. And in reality, the scrap wood that I grabbed in order to make this sled already had a couple holes in it. In fact, it's had about six. I got rid of most of them when I cut off the, the wings here in order to make this light. Uh, I cut these down to make it as light as possible and I decided to drill all those holes because I already had some holes in it to see if that would also lighten it up. Uh, I measured it, I weighed it before the holes and after the holes and they made almost zero difference. So I decided not to continue with that process because I didn't want to weaken the uh, integrity of the plywood. So anyway, that's uh, what they originally Four. They are now just something to, to make it unique as compared to anybody else's. When you do your woodworking, you want to do things that are a little bit unique, not just a total copy of somebody else. Small Workshop Guy, signing off.